Oh, hi guys and girls, welcome back to the spare room. Part 4, I think, of this little metal spinning attachment build. It's all fairly heavy work and it's still about 35, 36 degrees here it feels like, so... It's going to be a lot hotter tomorrow. And I thought, well, I'll get in and I'll cut this out. This is the... I've called it the lever swing plate. It's the plate that goes on top with two pins in it and a handle. Uh, one pin sits in this piece which is the rest we've already made. And one, the other pin will guide the upper lever so this one the pin drops down and it's got a a countersink on it for a weld and the other one's got a countersink on the top for a weld and, or a countersink on the bottom for the weld and the pin sticks up so this one the pin sticks down and this one the pin sticks up it's got a bit of a bend in it and it's 12 mil thick so it's quite a heavy chunk of stuff this come uh, this week from a seller off eBay. Not the world's cheapest way to buy flat steel in, in heavy quantities, but Oh, look at that it took me five minutes to unwrap that it's certainly not going to get damaged in post so this piece here I think is going to come out of the end here so best thing to do probably is to mark it all out and we're going to chain drill around the edge and hacksaw the rest off quick and then clean him up probably in the shaper if we can make it work so so two guesses what I've done this this week <laughs> no this took me about I guess probably an hour to drill this and cut him out with a hacksaw it's A saw would be nice, absolutely, and probably there's a, a small horizontal bandsaw in my future, I don't know, but this is probably the best and easiest and most cost effective way to do it. Decent hacksaw blade and lots of little holes. There's a tip that you never see written down anywhere. And I've never seen anyone really say. But chain drilling, the more time that you spend marking out the holes and getting them right and accurate and, and nice and neat, the easier the cleanup job afterwards. So take the time and use as much effort marking out your holes for chain drilling as you do for the rest and stick to them. And what you're going to find is that you've got a part that looks pretty neat from the start and doesn't need a whole lot of cleanup. This is a lesson in what not what to do. But it's chopped out. Next job is to clean these up 
and I'm going to set this up in the in the shaper I think and probably just quickly run over this and get it cleaned up we'll move over there and clean up a bit and get ready to do that It's still not real, real quick way of making anything, but it's certainly a lot easier way than filing, and probably a lot safer way for me than angle grinding. And probably this piece I could set up in the lathe and mill it. Hard on equipment and hard on milling cutters, and this is kind of calming. This is nearly all the stuff of the machine. Once you've got your inertia, it's really not hard work. What we've got is a fair bit of feed on a long stroke like this, so I'm not down feeding particularly deep. I think that's pretty close to the final cut. To be honest, watching the shaper run is like watching paint dry. 
this is fairly effortless and I'm really enjoying using it like it's it's a machine that really makes you feel like something's happening um, love it but sitting there watching it's a bit boring so this I guess has taken me look at my watch probably about 15-20 minutes to clean up uh, it's really the first job I've ever done with a shaper that has actually been for something so I'm pretty pleased about that I haven't gone over the top with the finish and uh, a skew tool on there would improve that a lot on the steel but there's not a lot of point in it because the clean up it's going to get is going to be with a fire with bit emery tape on it to be honest so I'm going to go through and clean up all these sides today and we'll have a bit more of a look at it then some of you might be interested in how I machined up to this corner it's pretty straightforward really on this machine this will be about the final cut I think still got a little bit of a groove there from one of the holes so I'm just going to take another one to put the feet out of gear to reverse back we'll just take a fine cut And I reckon that's going to do it for that one. So we've still got this one to do, this one to do, and have a think about the curve on the top. There are ways to do that in the shaper. The problem with it is that it's not going to fit in the machine, so it might be done by hand yet. But we'll have a look at that when we finish this up. Matter of giving this a file up. I've got this this side done and the bottom, and this one. There's still this one and this one to do. So we'll have a look when we've done that. Well that's another side. We've done this one and this one and this one and this one. The bit of blue tape is uh, for stroke adjustment. <laughs> it's very difficult, especially if there's a hole in the end, to not to overshoot because the only stroke adjustment you've got is with your hand. Um, I'm sure some of you guys are more than familiar with that concept but um, <laughs> that's looking all right there. Time to peel this off and um, give it all a bit of a clean up. I've still got to work out how I'm going to do this end. Um, probably it's doable in the shaper. I'm just going to have to experiment with some, with some setups and see what we come up with. But uh, that's been a fairly effortless hour, maybe an hour. Um, I would 
wonder whether you could do that any bigger, any better on a milling machine the same size um, or on the lathe, including setup time. So I'm fairly pleased with this and it might have a a little bit more of a, an in-depth video on on the idiosyncrasies of it. There are some interesting things that are kind of only a problem with this shaper I believe there's a fair bit of a fair bit of metal shaving so we've done all right and take this out and I'll give him a clean up and I'll have a look at this other end now anyway it's the end of the weekend and it's probably time for an update on this it's been quite a quite a job to do but it's starting to come up all right I need a bit more finishing needs a handle on here and it needs this drilling out to 11 millimeters and a pin that fits on there like that sits in that hole and another pin that sticks up here that the other lever sits through or sits on top of so that's what we've ended up with so far I haven't shown a whole lot of this I ended up filing this end and filing this around which is probably the nicest and easiest way to do it at the moment I couldn't find a, a tool with a left hand bend in it I had every intention of finishing this with a, with a down cut on the shaper just setting it up and cutting that and to be honest that's probably something that's very easy to do but I couldn't find a tool with enough bend in it so that the clapper box actually cleared the top as it come down so that didn't actually happen anyway that's what I've got so far Next job is to drill these two holes to 11mm and I'm thinking to make maybe, gosh I got black, all this metal metal scale off this, I'm thinking to make replaceable pins for these, it's probably overkill, but it'll make a nice job of it if we ever need to replace them. to drop something on the, the end of the handle and bend it or something which tends to happen and you might need to replace them so I'm going to drill them 11 and I'm going to make a pin with a with a step that sits up against the, the sheet up against there and put an 8mm countersunk bolt on the other side nice and tight so that everything's pulled down tight and maybe a bit of Loctite on them so that'll be the next job.